Judge ready? Time ready. Over the past year, the Russian government has escalated its commitment in Syria. First, through the application of military force by military intervention, and then through the escalation of this military intervention. After the Paris attacks, Vladimir Putin famously stated on state media, to judge the terrorists is up to God, but to send them to him is up to me. You can clearly see that Russia is committed in Syria. However, the Syrian government under Assad is an oppressive regime, so the question must be asked, should the Russian government take a stronger stance against the Assad regime in Syria? My answer to this question is a resounding no, for two reasons. The geopolitical consequences of the fall of the Assad regime towards Putin's Russia, and secondly, uh, the role of the Syrian conflict in the externalization of the domestic issues plaguing Russia today. First of all, we have to discuss the geopolitical consequences if the Assad regime falls. If we analyze the conflict in Syria, we can see there are three major players. First of all, the moderate rebels backed by NATO and the United States. Secondly, the Islamic State and affiliated Islamic groups. And thirdly, the Assad regime backed by Russia. Any victory by the previous two groups would be catastrophic for Russia for the following reasons. Let's first examine uh, the potential situation given an ISIS victory. ISIS has traced its media meteoric rise to the conflict in Syria. According to the Institute of Strategic Studies, this rise has inspired Islamic groups all over the world. One example most pertinent to Russia would be the uh, JMA, which, whose leader, Abdul Omar al-Shishani, in Chechnya has pledged allegiance to the Islamic State. Clearly, the Islamic State has global influence, including within Russia's borders. An ISIS victory would only embolden other Islamist groups and perhaps would stir up old groups. Chechnya, in particular for Russia, is an area of concern. Furthermore, the Islamic State has also displayed an, an alarming proficiency for stirring up radicalization within the local populace. As the Guardian reported following the Paris attacks, the root cause of why ISIS is so successful at radicalizing locals is that these locals feel oppressed in the first place. If we look at Chechnya, the major Islamist region within Russia, we can see that these locals are already oppressed. They have sufficient conditions in which ISIS could mobilize a significant force. So the conjunction of old wounds, of old established rebel groups, and new fanatics inspired by the conflict in Syria and a potential ISIS victory would be catastrophic for Russia. The second case scenario for the fall of the Assad regime would be a victory by NATO rebels, NATO-backed rebels. This would be horrendous. This would be the consequences would be major. First of all, a major Russian ally within the region would be lost. And according to the same report by the Institute of Strategic Studies cited earlier, this would quote unquote, erode the Russian sphere of influence within the Middle East. This is incredibly major, as Russia is already surrounded by NATO allies. In fact, if we look at history, even during the times of the Soviet Union, the US-backed Western bloc has seemed to encircle Russia through placing allies strategically around it. For example, the nations of Western Europe to the West, Japan to the East, and now more recently, even Afghanistan to Russia's South. Further loss in influence within the Middle East will be seen as catastrophic, given that Putin has already stated that the collapse of the Soviet Union was, quote unquote, one of the greatest tragedies of the 20th century. This would be catastrophic for another reason, and that's the historical Russian importance placed on warm water ports. If we even go back to the beginning of the 20th century, we can see that Russian governments have always placed emphasis on warm water ports, because although Russia has massive size, it lacks the ability to project naval power. Going back to uh, the Qing Dynasty in China, when they lost the war with Russia, one of the major concessions the Tsarist government asked for was the area surrounding Vladivostok, to give them increased naval power. Now, if we look at a map of Syria, we can see it has a major coastal area within the Mediterranean, a strategically valuable area for Russia. A loss of this would be devastating towards the Russian government in its geopolitical interests. Secondly, we must also look at the role of the Syrian conflict in externalizing Russia's current domestic problems. In the today's capitalist system, nations require both resources and markets. This is important because, the, because of the current oil crisis has led to the fall of the ruble. A NASDAQ report last November stated that oil prices have hit record lows and continue to fall. This is significant because although the Russian economy is not monolithic, it is certainly dependent on the revenue oil generates. 
Furthermore, the oil prices are predicted to continue to fall. Why? We can look at Iran. Now, some of you might ask, how is the lifting of sanctions on Iran relevant to Russia? Well, there's one thing, according to the BBC. Iran, once sanctions are lifted, could potentially flood the market with more crude oil. In a market already burdened by oversupply, this would be catastrophic to oil, price, uh, to oil prices, driving them to even lower standards. Furthermore, Iran can produce the most competitive prices, uh, prices on the market because they have not been able to export them for so long. And lastly, oil is important for another reason. Russia has long used oil as a weapon against the Western European states because states like Germany are dependent on Russian oil throughout the winter. However, once Iran can export the oil to Western trading partners, Russia would also lose an important diplomatic tool, further eroding their influence. And that goes back to my previous one, geopolitics. Russia cannot afford to lose any more international political capital. Now lastly, we can see the effect on the, of the current oil prices on the Russian society. Benedict Anderson once stated that nations are imagined communities of people, and any community must function cohesively. Oil crisis and economic downturn damages this cohesion. However, Vladimir Putin has a very easy remedy for this cohesion, because what brings people together more than a common enemy? And this is why Russia must not challenge the Assad regime, because they must otherize the Islamic State and the moderate rebel groups as terrorists. And this means a white knight approach to the Assad regime. Russia cannot afford questions of morality when it is externalizing its own problems and playing the hero. Furthermore, the conflict is a very public display of how far Russia has come within the last century. At the turn of the century, when the Russian, uh, Fed, sorry, when the Russian Federation was founded following the collapse of the Soviet Union, they had to mothball almost half of their air force because of the lack of spare parts and oil. Currently, according to CNN, Russia is running about 80 sorties, or combat missions, a day from military bases in Syria. This is a very public display of how Vladimir Putin has taken Russia from zero to hero. And thus, Russia must not take a stronger stand against the Assad government in Syria. Thank you very much.